Well hello everybody and welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be doing something slightly different and that's looking into the effects of temperature or temperature change on machine tools, materials in a home workshop. So the title of this video is Does Temperature, and what I mean by that is Does Temperature Change Affect Accuracy in a Home Workshop? Now before I've done any more evaluation of this topic I can tell you the answer already and the answer is yes and the reason I know that is because I've been involved in this in quite some level of depth in aerospace and other bits of industry that I've been in over the years been involved in measurements, been involved in analysis, been involved in implementing solutions and things like that so I understand this topic fairly well so we are talking about temperature delta, so temperature change, um, not just temperature alone, because temperature is a static thing unless it's changing. So it's only the change and the rate of change that will affect sizes of equipment, because everything expands and contracts with temperature. We're going to be talking a little bit about the laws of physics, so we're going to do a very, very little bit of maths please don't switch off I will make it very simple and this is just for the people that want to understand the the physics behind this and it will be really really quick just more of a reference as to where you can go to dig a bit deeper should you want to and we'll do a very quick worked example and we're then going to take some measurements so I'm going to set some indicators up on one of my machines we're going to hopefully get a change of temperature in the workshop so and then we're going to take another set of measurements and we're going to show what that difference is in in three different planes. I'm going to do it on my Miller machine, so in X, Y, and Z. We're then going to look at the results and analyze those. Uh, we're then going to talk a little bit about what can you do to minimize the impacts of temperature change or temperature delta in a home workshop. And right at the end, we'll do some conclusions. Now, you've already had the conclusion. The answer is yes, it does affect it, but we'll talk a little bit more about how much does it affect it and do you really need to be worried so with all of that being said and done I'm going to clear the board we'll come back in very quick bit of maths and then we'll move over to the machine and I'll show you the setup that I've done to take the measurements okay I promise I'm going to make this quick so a quick bit of physics so laws of physics universal doesn't matter where you are on the planet the same stuff happens when it comes to the formula and the laws of physics. I've met one or two people in my career who um, <laughs> entertainingly uh, think that they can circumnavigate the laws of physics and you actually can't and I always find that quite entertaining. Anyway, we're talking here about the coefficient of thermal expansion. Don't worry about the words if you don't understand coefficient, it just means constant. It's a constant value for a known thing. So for steel the coefficient of thermal expansion is 10.8 to 12.5 times 10 to the minus 6 and the 10 to the minus 6 just means it's a really really small number that's constant we've got a formula here for the coefficient of thermal expansion for materials which is the change in length or delta l is equal to your coefficient number which is this one multiplied by your original length, multiplied by your change in temperature, or delta T, as I've written it. So, typical home shop job here, lump of steel, 100 millimetres, 4 inches long, 50 millimetres, 2 inches high, doesn't matter that way, we're just going to take the longest length, that's all we're concerned with. When I plug that into this formula, I've taken 11 as the number, just to make the maths easy, because that is between 10.8 and 12.5, I've just chosen 11. When I work that through, my results are 0.011 millimetres with a 10 degree temperature delta between day and night, which is more than easily achievable in a home workshop. Uh, probably in excess of 10 degrees, I would think, at, at worst case. So <clears throat> you might say, based on that, well, I don't need to worry about this then, John, do I? Because that's sub what I can measure anyway. So therefore it's never going to be a problem to me in a home workshop. Not so. So let's just get rid of this workings. 
and we're just going to change things up a bit. I'm not going to worry about the height dimension, I'm just going to worry about the longest dimension. So my milling machine has got a 500mm or just over 500mm X travel, so we're going to say we're going to make use of all of that. So 500mm long and we're going to say this is aluminium and we're going to say we've got some datum holes that are nearly at the extremities of that piece of material. So when I do the maths here, my change in length is equal to, this time the number, the coefficient number for aluminium is 32 times 10 to the minus 6 again, multiplied by my original length, which is 500, multiplied by my change in temperature, so we'll go for the 10 degrees again, and I've already done the maths, the output here is 0 0.16 millimetres, which is about six and a half thou, roughly. So if I'd got a plus minus a thou, or even plus minus two thou tolerance between these two holes, and I experience a 10 degree temperature shift between day and night while the job's still on the machine, I've blown my tolerance. So you can see very quickly how you can get to, you know, temperature being a problem. I'm just going to do one last very quick one and I'm going to take this into my work context now and in shipbuilding we often have large panels of steel that are 13 meters long which is 13 thousand millimeters in length so we're back to our 10.8 to 12.5 so, done the maths on that, so we're now back to our 11 times 10 to the minus 6 again, if I use 11 as a round number, multiplied by my original length of 13,000, and then I'm going to use my 10 degree delta again between day and night, and my answer now is 1.43 millimetres, which is about 60 thou over about 42 feet which sounds bonkers when you say it like that but one and a half millimeters is quite a change so that's all I'm going to do with the maths and just to give you an awareness that on very small parts you can probably get away with it especially with steels on aluminiums and things like that obviously the effect is much larger so we're over at the mill and what I've done is I've got a piece of drill rod or ground high speed steel in the chuck. I'm not going to move the chuck at all. I've set three DTIs up, so all coming off my vise, which is predominantly where you would hold your workpiece or straight off the table, similar. So I've got one in Z on the underside of my quill plate. I've got one in X on the side of the drill rod and one in Y on the side of the drill rod and they're all set to zero. So currently the time is and date it's 11 minutes past 11 on Friday the 28th of July and the temperature at this point in time is just take some shots off the vise, so 18 degrees Celsius, get one on the chuck, yep 18, I'll just take another one off the quill plate, 20.4, we'll try that again, might be a bit of refraction, 19.5, Eighteen, seventeen point eight, seventeen point six. So we're varying between seventeen and a half degrees, eighteen and a half degrees, 
18.1 so yeah we're within we're within a degree pretty much at this time so and for those in bananas that's 64.6 Fahrenheit roughly so that's the temperature what I'll do is I'll come back out at a completely different time of day so first thing in the morning when the workshops cooled down a little bit so we're in the middle of summer here at the minute and it is quite mild so I'll come out first thing in the morning it will be three four five degrees cooler I'm not going to go anywhere near this machine now and we'll retake some measurements of temperature and we'll note the difference on the three DTIs so we're coming back to have a look at this I've clearly picked the wrong time of year for this experiment I normally get quite a temperature delta and the weather's been very static temperature wise day and night for the last few days so it's currently Monday the 31st of July and if I'm looking at I've been watching this over the last couple of days I've had absolutely zero movement well I had about a tiny a needle's width worth of movement yesterday I think which was Sunday it's back on zero just now if I look at my x-axis I am plus probably 15 microns if I look at my y-axis I am minus 10 microns so tiny amounts of movement and if we go for some temperature checks just to give you an idea it has changed from the other day we're now 15.4 15.6 degrees something like that around about where we're taking the, the measurements so completely inconclusive other than there has been a very slight change in temperature and there's been a very slight amount of movement on my machine which over a two or three day period is quite I'm quite pleased that you know there's no other movement in the machine other than a tiny tiny amount which has happened just through it can only be through thermal change I've, I've been away from this machine I've not touched it not lent on it I've just left it completely static so any movement that's happened in these dials has happened as a result of temperature change so as I said a little bit inconclusive this is probably one to come back to in the middle of winter when I've got more of a delta between day and night to actually drill into a bit more of how much a machine tool will actually move in a home workshop okay <clears throat> I know we said we were going to do some analysis of the numbers there's no point doing analysis on the numbers that I measured because they were too small because the temperature temperature even differential was too small so what I thought it was worth doing is this instead so what I've done here is I've just reminded us all that our coefficient of thermal expansion for aluminium is 32 times 10 to the minus 6 we saw that earlier on the board I've also looked out the coefficient of thermal expansion for grey cast iron which is 5.8 times 10 to the minus 6 and again a reminder of our formula that the change in length is equal to the coefficient number multiplied by our original length multiplied by our change in temperature so what I've done here is I've measured my DRO which sits under here on my x-axis on my longest axis and that measures 700 millimeters end to end and you'll notice that that is sat on an aluminium backing plate uh, which is attached to a cast iron table so if we work those numbers through again with our 10 degrees celsius delta this is the movement i get on my aluminium backing plate which is 0.224 millimeters which is about 10 thou and this is the movement I get on my grey cast iron on my table which is 0 0.04 millimetres which is just under 2000 so when I add all of that together and take one from the other the difference that the aluminium will move compared to the table that it's mounted to is 0.1834 millimetres or 7000 two tenths so this is something really worth thinking about and my aluminium piece is bolted tight up at both ends 
So if the aluminium does expand by that much, guess what it's going to do? It's going to bow like this in the middle, which means my x-axis then, by some considerable amount as well, looking at the difference between the two, my x-axis is going to be giving me dodgy readings, as will my y-axis, by not so much because it's shorter, as will my z-axis. Again, it's shorter, so not as much, but just worth thinking about when you're trusting your DRO, think about your temperature changes and what effect that might be having on the accuracy that your DRO gives you. Okay, so you've seen the, the not analysis, but you've seen a bit of analysis around machine tool and thermal effects. So what I said on the board at the beginning was talking a little bit about how you can sort of mitigate or avoid some of the issues that could be caused by temperature variation in a home workshop. So it's it's you know it's quite simple really. So in in a sort of industrial application <clears throat> you would always try and fix the root cause. The root cause is the temperature variation so you would have a heated or a cooled workshop to try and maintain an even temperature all the time so that you take the thermal effects out of the equation not going to do that in a home workshop especially at today's energy prices so fixing the root cause is probably not an issue or probably not a solution sorry there are things you can do to probably try and make that the variation less by insulating the workshop and things like that but lots of work so yeah, my, my advice would be if you think you're in that territory that we've shown there around either your DRO potentially moving, you've got a big temperature delta, you've got a job that requires accurate tolerances to be held, whether that's on a lathe or on a milling machine, that just get the, get the accurate stuff done in the same setup at the same time. So you're doing it all at once and you're minimising the opportunity for variation. You can leave the job on the machine if there's other features to be done that aren't so critical you can do them on another day and if the temperatures change it doesn't really matter because you're going to be within the tolerances that you're working within so it's just a bit about how you set your job up and how you plan around your type tolerance stuff if you know you're going to see a lot of temperature variation it's as simple as that and machine one datum feature on your part that you know where it is you know what it is if it's a dowel hole or a pocket or something that it should you have to walk away and come back on another day you can go back and you can reference that one feature, reset your datums at that particular point, and then you're still machining everything else with respect to that one datum that you've already machined. Just things like that, just basics around trying to mitigate any of that thermal thermal growth. But on the whole, this won't apply to 99% of home workshops, but I thought it might be interesting just to run through it. So I hope you found all of that interesting, and I think we'll probably conclude this video now. So. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along. And we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.